I will confess to you that it is harder to preach on very familiar scriptures than it is to preach on ones you've never heard before. There's something about finding the life back in a story that we've all heard over and over. It's kind of like telling a joke that everybody's already heard. It's kind of, but you know, if I had to do any of them, this is one that is absolutely precious and important and absolutely foundational for who we are as Christians. This story that is so often called the prodigal son, but it's really about a prodigal God. So here's the thing about God that makes God a little annoying at times, part of that confession we heard, and kind of incredibly radical. If you look at the scriptures, the, the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, frequently tell us about this loving parental God, a God who is so profoundly invested in God's chosen people. But when we get to the New Testament, we have a profoundly invested God who is now incarnate in the person Jesus. And Jesus starts telling a lot of stories, including this one, and so many of them are about a party. A party, a wedding feast, a banquet. A king is sending out invitations to everyone to come to a banquet. Will you come? A, a bridegroom who is coming to the wedding and, and these women, these virgins, these brides, bridesmaids are there waiting and waiting and waiting for the bridegroom to come. So many stories about parties, including this one, where we have the father longing for the children to return. And when they return, it's not simply a hug and a kiss and a ring, it's a party. You know, we've gone through two and a half years with no parties. We've gone through a time of, of literally a social fast from our capacity to be together in ways that have felt familiar. And back in the ancient Near East, a party was an equivalent challenge to, to have, right? Maybe the affluent people did it, but the times when the, when the parties happened for the rest of us were weddings, were festivals, were Passover, were times when people could gather and celebrate. They were very special, very special. At that time as in now, people were much more familiar with challenge and deprivation and even trauma than they were with the commonplaceness of a party. It just wasn't commonplace. So what does it mean to us to have a prodigal God, to have a God whose very heart is set on getting us to the party? That's a pretty radical thing to think about. I expect, like you, that's not an image of God that's common in your head. It could be you think more of God as, as wanting to make sure you've gotten all the to-do list of your good deeds checked off. Or you have a God who, who is sort of taking care of business and letting you take care of yours. Have you thought about a God who is having and hosting a party and you are invited in? Makes a difference. One of the things that happens to us because of the challenges of our lives, one of the things that's happened to us societally because we have been isolated from each other is we have lost something, right? We've lost the capacity to feel that connection to each other. And here we have a God who is inviting us back in. Trauma is a huge reality. We've been through a national trauma. We have had particular traumas, losses in our own lives. And we're dealing with all sorts of other kinds of trauma that might not be ours, but we're seeing it in the world, in Ukraine. We're seeing it in our communities with homelessness and addiction. The ancient Near East was no different. All sorts of violence, all sorts of problems. So in this book called The Body Keeps the Score, Bessel van der Kork talks about what happens when societies and people deal with those kinds of traumas. When they're kept away from the, the community, the party, when they're kept away from those things that bring life and joy and freedom and, and pleasure. 
And he talks about that when that happens, when trauma happens, the body shuts down. In fact, we lose our capacity to be in our bodies in the same way. You might know this from your own experience, that you start to forget to take care of yourself. You forget to eat, or you forget to sleep, or you sleep too much. Our relationships to our bodies change when we are under too much stress. COVID weight, anyone? Yeah. We're now working together to think about these things. The, the feeling of anxiety when we're in a group now because our bodies have gotten used to a different way of being. We are a community and a church that believes that our bodies are the place in which God dwells. They're important. And Jesus models this by showing us God the Father embodying welcome, embodying joy. I want to make a claim with you this morning that I, I believe we can parse it out and it's right, but you can push back if you don't think so. I think our relationship to Christ and our relationship to community are equally important. I don't think that Jesus would want us to ever say, I've got my Jesus, I'm going to stay home, I'm going to take care of my Jesus, and the rest of the week is mine. Community and Christ are one thing. When God invites and models this welcoming father, it's not simply restoration of the relationship, it's restoration of all the relationships together in the party. Are you with me? Are you seeing that? All right. So here's the thing I want to think about with you. If God's mind is on a party, why? What is it about a party that's important for us? What is it about community that is so essential for us? Well, the number one thing I think of is that body thing. You know, I read about how, you know how all armies march together? How they have these formations and they're all learning how to march and step and turn? Do you know the reason they did that? It is because when we are in step with one another, when we're having to walk in a particular way, or when we're line dancing, we have encouragement from the community. We quit thinking about our fears and our anxieties and all these individual things that separate us, and we go into our bodies. It gives us courage to enter into the battle because we are in lockstep. There is a physical reason why we do these things. Isn't that interesting? Our bodies matter to God. Our embodiment in this world together matters. The fact that we're all together in this place matters to God. So I want to suggest to you as we look at Luke 15, a couple of places where you might find yourself on the way to the party. Maybe you're like that first son and you've gone off to a far country and you're back here today but it's the first time you've been in this church for a long time maybe it's the first time you've really felt like you're drawing close to that hope welcome welcome because God's heart for us is longing for that closeness and if maybe you're one who feels like man my moral suitcase is way overweight I am never getting on that salvation airplane unless I pay a whole lot of good deeds because my luggage is full of sin. No, no, no. You are welcome. Our moral behavior is our detriment. It weighs us down. It hurts us. God's loving heart is to say, you are forgiven. Repent, come to me, and let go of that stuff that keeps you separated from me. Maybe you're like that second son, and you're thinking, yeah, I'm here, I'm, I'm at the party that Rebecca's talking about. I come here every Sunday, but I'm not feeling like God's throwing me any party. Look at my life. Look at the stuff that's going on in my life. How can you make the claim that God loves me and wants to throw a party for me? The nature of God's party is distinctive. The nature of God's party have you ever been to a party you didn't like? Where you just so felt so awkward? Yeah, it's the pits. You kind of want to just kind of stand off in a corner because, you, you know, and you're waiting until you can go. That is not God's party. 
God's party is this. Every single person in the party is known and held in God's mind and heart. And when we are in God's party, we're holding each other in mind and heart. The best parties are the ones where everybody knows at the party. You know that you belong. You know that you can goof up and dance funny and mess up at the electric slide because everybody loves you right? They don't care. They don't care if you're silly or if you've got your weirdness on because they love you. That's God's party. That's what we're all a part of. And all those who have sat in these pews before, who have gone on before us, they are down. They are in it. And we are on the outskirts of that. And how we enter in deeper and deeper is two ways through the relationship we have with that God. That God that is modeled in the Father who's looking and ready and waiting to run out and grab us and pull us into himself. That God is your God and my God. That God is embodied in Jesus who went as far as it took to bring us home. You know, the, the parable says, the father says, you are, you are dead and now you are alive, my son. You were lost, but now you are found. Those are equivalencies then, right? Dead and lost, alive and found. If you're not found, you're not alive. Are you found? Are you entering in more and more to that relationship? I want to tell you it's not a checklist. That relationship is not, I read my Bible, or I gave my alms. It's a relationship. It's your relationship, and your weird belongs in it. God made you just the way you are, and how you find God is your thing. It's your part of the party. So the other thing is that we want to be in community, the community part is huge, my friends, huge. Jesus had his community around him, and it widened, and it widened, because people saw that in that place, in the midst of all the trauma, they were known and held in each other's minds and hearts. Where else does that happen to us? Where else do we go and somebody's actually, you know, your phone, you put one thing in there and you get 50 million commercials about that is that keeping you in somebody's mind and heart no that's keeping you in somebody else's wallet doesn't count this my friends is where we practice community and this is where that love extends out to the world because we were dead and now we're alive we were lost and now we're found come be found with us and join the party so let your body be a part of your faith. If you are a person who hasn't done that, if you're like me and you had some trauma and your body just sort of holds your brain and moves it around through the world, stop. Find your way to engage and let God love you, all of you. And... If you're not joining the community, if you're feeling afraid, find your way to enter into the heart and mind of the community again. Because we need each other. The world needs what we've got. And we can't hold it in tight. We can't bury it underground. So last thing about this party, my friends. Here's how I'm thinking about it. I think the party is like this. It's big. What's the biggest party you've ever been to? I haven't been to, I don't actually like parties. I get really nervous. So I tend to be the one, I only want the party with everybody likes me and knows my weird already. Maybe you're like that. This party is that party. Everybody loves you and knows your weird stuff, you know, your, your quirks. But it's a huge party. It's the universe is the party. And each of us is working our way in, deeper in, and higher up toward God. And in that process, you know, at the outside of the party, what is there? You get the invitation, and then you kind of get in a little closer, and somebody greets you or, you know, gives you the beads for the Mardi Gras, or they give you whatever, and you sort of start getting equipped for the party, right? 
And you start getting closer in and further in, and you see people, and now, and we're all in that process. We're on our way to the very heart of God. And somewhere along the way, God is running to us. And it's going to be so sweet when it's the fullness of the party and we're all like getting down, but we're not there yet. But we're together. And that is what this parable is about. Wherever you are, you are on your way home. You are not lost. You are found. Amen. Amen. Let us stand together and affirm our faith. We believe in God above us, maker, maker and, and sustainer of all life, of, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all humanity. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died for 